Nurse, wonderfully exotic background that um, encompasses the East and the West, which is the best of both worlds. And um, she has a Turkish background and she was born and raised in Nice, a wonderful family of extended characters who have great influence on her. So my first question to get started is, um, what was it like as a young person who was creative, who was artistic, growing up in Nice in France, coming from your exotic background, what influences would you say your background and family had on you? I could say that uh, probably because my family uh, was Jewish as well as Turkish and hid during the war, I happened to be born after the war when they were so happy to have survived. They were hiding uh, during the war for over a year in a farm. Uh, quite a few of the family, aunts and cousins, died, uh, unfortunately, in concentration camps. So the one that remained had a love of life. And I think what I learned from them is to love every single day. And uh, despite what you do. And I think that's a great lesson that I got. So I started, um, do you want to, me to start? I'm, my life is very long because I'm very old, although I don't look like it, but uh, I am. And uh, uh, I started living in Nice in the south of France and being visited by wonderful aunts, Turkish aunts, who would come in the summer wearing uh, fabulous clothes. Was this your aunt Lisa? Yes. My aunt Visa, and uh, uh, I had three aunts, but Visa was the one that uh, really uh, loved fashion the most. And uh, every summer she would come and go to Paris to see the couture show. And when I was 14, 15, she started taking me there. And that was uh, my first encounter with uh, designers and uh, haute couture. Because at the time, um, it was uh, the late 50s, 60s, there were no, practically no prêt à porter. So uh, everything came from uh, either the street fashion or the couture. And I think my, fashion, my love for fashion came from, from her, really, and those visits to Paris. Um, considering what is going on in the world right now, um, we are creative individuals, but we also have a world that is quite divided, a world that has um, many nuances, and as you said earlier, um, being from a Jewish heritage and having family there during World War II when France was uh, occupied. Um, was there any influence coming from your dad and from your parents that stories or particular events that formed your, not only your creative, but your life journey? looking into what they had to survive? Well, I, I remember very well my grandfather telling us as we were growing up that uh, they escaped uh, getting caught by the Gestapo uh, as he was walking out of his apartment. The Gestapo came in to pick him up and asked him where he was living, which floor, and my grandfather said, oh, we don't, I don't live here. So it was really touch and go. And that day, they left everything. He told my parents, uh, my uh, uncles and uh, aunts, everybody in that family, in the close family, left everything where they uh, lived and uh, took a train and went into hiding in that farm. So um, it was, you know, when you are a kid, you are fascinated by those stories. and. Uh, I told them, I, I told my, my daughter and now my grandchildren, I want them to know uh, what has happened to our family and, um, and to appreciate the life we have. Because, um, as, as I was saying, with, with all the divisions that's happening now, I think art and creativity are a soothing balm. It's something that uh, wonderful individuals like yourself bring to society in general. And um, this can make a world of difference. So again, um, I think that for people who are creative and for people who enjoy the arts, um, wonderful work that you create has made a world of difference. 
Um, I wanted to, on a lighter note, uh, talk about your aunt again, um, who came in and who took you to the couture shows and um, really had an influence on you. Um, for me, I had my grandmother who influenced me, so I, I can relate. And when you have that sort of vibrant, vivacious personality in your life, you, you get a sense of who you are and a sense of being. Are there any particular moments attending the shows and going into Paris with her that may have nudged you towards the fashion industry? The funny thing is I liked fashion, but actually it was painting that I thought I would become. And uh, I, when I went to Paris, so going to Paris was fascinating. It was wonderful and it, uh, they were just the, the burgeoning, the beginning of uh, fashion design and fashion schools in Paris, not at all in the south of France. Or, uh, so I thought if I tell my parents I wanted to live in Paris, if I tell my parents I want to do fashion, they will have to send me to Paris. But if I say I want to do art, fine art, I will have to go to Lyon or Marseille. And uh, so I thought I'll tell them I want to go to fashion school because there were no way out. And I was, I was quite good. I was dressing my, my dolls. I was making uh, uh, little clothes, their wardrobes in paper. So uh, I enjoyed that, that side of it. But I thought I'll, I'll, I want to be a painter. So eventually they let me go when I was uh, 19. And I went to fashion school and to art school. And fashion was uh, really the beginning then of pret a porter There were some stylists, we call them stylists in French, uh, fashion designer who paved the road to us younger ones. And, uh, I don't know if you, if you heard of Emmanuel Kahn, Michel Rosier. Those women were incredible for us. You know, we look up at these women and so you can make her a profession of designing clothes. And uh, so uh, um, after a year of uh, being at fashion school, I knew already how to uh, present my work, go to uh, magazines, fashion magazines, um, and start selling my sketches. So it was very easy that way, where painting was very, very hard, and uh, nobody was interested in what I was doing. So I thought, okay, well, my, my route is towards fashion. And um, I didn't even finish my second year at fashion school, it was a three years course, but because I was already uh, working with companies and uh, selling work, and it was, I was lucky, really, to have been born at that time where people were interested in making clothes which would be a bit different. And uh, so that's my beginning. Um. Some people, like as you said, you were drawn towards painting, drawn towards the arts, and you had an art education and fashion education. Um, studying fashion design alone can be challenging. How did you manage to do an arts program, studying art and fashion at the same time? And did that guide you into who you are now? Well, I did actually, uh, well, I was doing fashion in the morning, skipping the courses, the technique courses in the afternoon to go to La Grande Chaumière to do uh, painting and drawing. So, or to go to the cinema, which I loved. And so I stopped actually painting after a couple of years because I was so involved with uh, designing clothes that uh, I left the art uh, on its own and uh, picked it up on the year uh, years later. And um, did you choose fashion or did fashion choose you? I think if fashion chose me, maybe because they made it, it was easy for me to understand what was uh, demand, demanded from a fashion designer. So I did not struggle. You know, it's not like that nowadays. But then it was uh, late 60s by then and uh, it, it, it was not difficult, so it was fun as well. And everybody liked looking at new ideas and uh, getting dressed. And then in 72, I met Stephen Marks, 
and he had just come back uh, from India and China, and he said to me, uh, you know, you must come with me on the next trip because uh, these countries are fantastic. They are the fabrics you can find in India, the, the prints, the colors, the hand-dyed colors that will excite you, and you could draw a collection there. So I went with him and started French Connection. And, you know, all these wonderful years, coming to the, the East and uh, learning the, the, what you can do with all the knowledge of this country and bringing the Western knowledge to the patent cutters and uh, the factories. And, you know, we, we were very successful. So it was very enjoyable. A very interesting and nuanced journey. It was a wonderful journey. Um, just as an input to our audience, um, Nicole Fari has a CBE uh, from the United Kingdom.